Today's lesson is called Charlie Puth, The Making of a Star, Day 2. Welcome everyone to our show. My name is Jeff. And I'm Roger, and today we're going to continue talking about Charlie Puth, The Making of a Star. Now, you may know him as the singer of See You Again, which was a song that was popular a couple of years ago, and it featured in one of the Fast and Furious movies, number seven, I believe. I think uh, number eight has come out since then. But uh, in number seven, of course, we had this famous song. And lots of people thought, well, yeah, it's a nice song and everything, but you're just a one-hit wonder. We're not going to see you again. But he has proved those people wrong. He is a hit maker, and his debut album came out, and it had a couple of hits on it. Marvin Gaye and One Call Away, and now he's got another album out entitled Voice Notes, and I'm sure there are some nice songs on that as well. I see what you did there, by the way. That was very funny, Roger. You said, yeah, people thought that Charlie Puth was going to be a one-hit wonder, and then you said, ah, we'll never... See you again. Ah, because oh, wow, that was a his, coincidence. His big, I did not know I was doing that. Because his big hit is called See You Again, which you're going to sing right now. Oh, gee, do I really have to? That's yes, one of yes, those, you do. You that's owe That's one me. of those songs that you would hear everywhere, and I got so sick of hearing it, even though it's a nice song and you stuff like that. You owe me, Roger. They overplayed it, but I think he does a falsetto. Till I see you again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bravo. That's, that's all I know of it. Bravo, yeah. Roger. Bravo. That was a fantastic rendition. I think we can end the introduction right now. I think that you have sung so well that there's nothing more to say. So, folks, let's go ahead and take a short break. But when we come back, we'll start talking about Charlie Puth once again. As a kid, Puth was bullied a lot and struggled in school. However, he always excelled in music and studied piano from the age of four onward. At age 12, he learned that he has perfect pitch, which means that he can identify or recreate a musical note or chord without a reference tone. The discovery happened in church, which Puth attended with his parents every Sunday. When the church's organist didn't come in one day, Puth stepped up and played all the songs for the service from memory. 大家好,今天第一个单字我们看到的是bully。这个字当作动词,它有霸凌欺负的意思。例如, Kids often bullied Alex until he stood up for himself. 孩子们常欺负Alex,到他挺身捍卫自己才停止。再来,我们看到的单字是onward。这个字当作副词,代表从某时期一直的意思。所以我们可以说,My grandmother has taken medicine when she was 40 onward. 我奶奶从四十岁开始就一直吃药。接下来我们看到的单字是chord。这个字当作名词,它有音乐和弦或是合音的意思。例如, John has been learning how to play chords on the guitar for two weeks. John从两个礼拜前到现在都在学习如何在吉他上弹和弦。Okay, everybody, today we're going to focus on Charlie Puth's life, how he became famous and where he got his start. So let's go back to his childhood. It says here, as a kid, or when he was a child, Puth was bullied a lot and struggled in school. Now, here we've got the word bully. Bully can be both a noun and a verb. A bully, as a noun, is a person who is strong and usually picks on people who are young younger or weaker than them, and bully can also be a verb to be bullied by someone. I was a kind of a large kid myself, so people left me alone in school. I was not bullied, and hopefully I did not bully other kids. So you were a gentle giant. Kind of. I was kind of shy and quiet and uh, artistic, and I wrote poetry, and I, I kept to myself. So you were a gentle and sensitive giant. You weren't beating up the other kids on the playground. I commend you for that because, yeah, you're a big guy. You could have very easily been a very imposing bully. Anyways, yes, to be bullied, everyone, is to be insulted or picked on as a kid by other children. And, yes, usually the person doing the bullying is called a bully. 
A bully, and it can happen in any place in the world. Girls can be bullies, although we oftentimes think of a boy as being a bully. But、uh, here, Puth was bullied when he was a kid. He was probably smaller and weaker, so of course、uh, the big macho guys would probably pick on him. However, he always excelled in music and studied piano from the age of four onward. So maybe that's one of the reasons why he was bullied because he liked music. Music. He excelled in music. He was really good at music, and so he studied piano since the age of four years old. He started at the age of four, and he studied onward from there. Onward just means from that point into the future. There you go, onward, forward in time from some point. So he started studying piano, or started playing the piano at the age of four. And that was just the beginning. Yes, he flourished as a musician and as a piano player as well. He played from the age of four and then onward. He kept playing from the age of four, and then he played well into the future after that point in time. Anyways, at the age of twelve, our article continues. At the age of twelve, or age twelve, I should say, he learned that he has perfect. Pitch, which means that he can identify or recreate a musical note or chord without a reference tone. Like I don't have perfect pitch. I can sing pretty well. I'm not tone deaf. But if someone said, "Hey, sing a high C," I wouldn't know how to do that. If someone played that high C on the piano, I could mimic that pitch pretty well. But here, this guy. Charlie Puth, he doesn't need that type of help. He doesn't need that reference tone. He has perfect pitch. And yes, at age 12, he learned that he has perfect pitch. Notice the use of tense there. At age 12, he learned that he has and not had perfect pitch because he still has perfect pitch, and he's also still alive. Anyways, yes, it says here he can identify. Or recreate a musical note or chord without a reference tone. That's what perfect pitch is all about. How impressive! But what is a chord? You guys might be asking that question of yourselves right now. A chord is a group of notes that, when played together, form a harmonious and nice musical sound. A chord, yes,、uh, two or more notes,、uh, like a C major chord, a C minor seven chord, etc. There are different kinds of chords out there, and he can recreate a. Note: I don't have perfect pitch myself, but I can kind of recreate some notes. If you say C, I know it's like, or A. A is more like, and maybe B flat because I used to play the、uh, trumpet, but I kind of forget what B flat sounds like. But in any case, he can recreate those notes and chords. It's as if he's autistic or something. He can just sit down at the it's, piano it's and、like、he's start a playing music, a song. It's like he's a musical savant. Yeah, here we're struggling with B flat. Charlie Puth would sit down and say, "What's the problem? This is B flat." And then he would sing the note, and it would be perfect. Here we're struggling. We're not bad singers, but we're just not Charlie Puth. The savant. Anyways, more on perfect pitch and Charlie Puth's discovery that he has perfect pitch. Yeah, the discovery happened in church, which Puth attended with his parents every Sunday. And yeah, when the church's organist didn't come in one day, Charlie Puth stepped up and played all the songs for the service. From memory, yeah. Not only, folks, does he have perfect pitch, but yeah, apparently he has a fantastic memory. He heard the songs and he knew how to play them. Wow, he sounds like Mozart or something. Anyways, before we take a break here, let's talk about this word organist. An organist is a person who plays an organ, an instrument, a musical instrument called the organ. And yes, an organist is someone who plays an organ, but they do so in a somewhat formal, official, or professional. Capacity. Now, I have sat down at an organ and I have pressed the keys, but that does not make me an organist. No, no, no. But apparently, yeah, Charlie Puth. He sat down at the organ and he was able to play a bunch of songs. So maybe he's not an organist, but yeah. If he wanted to become one, that wouldn't be much of a problem for him. Now, here though, we're not talking about parts of the body or anything like that. This musical instrument, known as an organ, is a big keyboard instrument featuring pipes that make sound by way of compressed air. It kind of looks like a super fancy and big piano. 
Indeed,、uh, funny you mentioned piano because remember he did start to study the piano from the age of four onward. So yeah, it's a keyboard instrument. The organ and the piano are very similar. So he was probably able to take his expertise from the piano and apply it to the organ that day in church. And he was able to play all of those hymns for all the worshipers who went to church that day. Okay, everybody, we're going to move on now to the next paragraph. Let's listen first. Puth continued to study classical music as a teenager. This eventually led to a full scholarship to attend the renowned Berklee College of Music. While there, Puth made a cover of Adele's "Someone Like You" with a fellow student. The cover became a sensation and led to Puth appearing on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Subsequently, his career took off. 第二部分我们看到的单词是 renowned. 这个字当做形容词，代表有名的或是有声望的意思。例如 ，Paula 以其美妙嗓音与绝佳演出闻名。英文可以这么说 ：Paula was renowned for her beautiful voice and fantastic performances。再来，我们看到的单词是 sensation。这个字当做名词，它有引起轰动的人事物或是感觉知觉的意思。所以，我们可以说 ：Edward's band was a sensation at the town festival last year。Edward 的乐团在镇上去年的节庆活动中引起轰动。Okay, before the break, we were learning about Charlie Puth, the savant. Yeah, this guy not only has an amazing musical memory, but he also has perfect pitch. How about that?、And、that's why Puth continued to study music. Okay, remember he played the piano. He was able to play the organ without a problem. But yeah, later on he continued to study music. Yeah, Puth continued to study classical music as a teenager. Classical music, playing stuff by Beethoven, Mozart, etc., and that was only when he was a teenager, between the ages of thirteen and nineteen, and this eventually led to a full scholarship to attend the renowned Berklee College of Music. So he was a musical genius. And he probably practiced for many hours when he was a teenager, and his hard work paid off. He eventually got a full scholarship to go to Berkeley, which is one of the famous music schools in the United States, along with the Juilliard School and Eastman, etc., etc. He got a full scholarship, which means he did not have to pay tuition at all. And this is a renowned college of music, which means it's famous. If you want to become a famous violinist. In a world-famous orchestra, this is one of the schools you want to go to. There you go. If something is renowned, it's famous, it's known by or talked about by many people. So yes, this is a very well-known school with a very good reputation. It's a very famous school, a very famous college of music, I should say. Now let's go ahead and move on. The next sentence says, "While there, Puth made a cover of Adele's 'Someone Like You.'" With a fellow student. Now, I've already asked you to sing once. Is it too much for me to well, ask you to sing again? You could kind of ask me to sing again. Because How about go ahead and sing Adele's "Someone Like You"? Because I just love your pipes, there, Roger.、Uh, I, I, I can't do that song, but I do know Adele,、oh, and she's got、bad. another song. We could have had it all. I know that song, but unfortunately, I do not know "Someone Like You." But as we mentioned in our program last time, he kind of got his start by covering songs and writing his own songs, and then uploading them. To YouTube, so he did a cover of "Someone Like You" by Adele, a famous British singer, and he did this with somebody else, with a fellow student at the Berklee College of Music. And the cover became a sensation, and led to Puth appearing on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Subsequently, his career took off. Sensation here just means something really spectacular, really wonderful, really fantastic, and lots of people knew about it. And I guess he probably made a lot of money from it. Yeah, usually when we're talking about a sensation, we're talking about something that you feel by way of your senses. But here, a sensation is something totally different. Here, a sensation is something. That is very famous, or which has attracted the enthusiasm of many people. So yes, this cover became a sensation. Okay, people started to really, really love this particular song. Yeah, 
Adele's version of Someone Like You is fantastic, but this particular cover was also so good that people loved it. They really, really loved this song, and for that reason, this song became a sensation, or this cover of the song, I should say, became a sensation. And yes, it says here that the cover became a sensation, and this led to Puth appearing on the Ellen DeGeneres show, and subsequently, his career took off. Remember, Charlie Puth, we said on day when he shot to fame, yeah, you could also say in a very similar situation or in a similar way that his career took off. Yeah, he shot to fame after appearing on this show or after appearing on this show, his career took off. Because yes, in this case, to take off is to become successful or popular very quickly or over a short period of time. Yes, you can shoot to fame or your career can take off. And in both situations, we are not being literal. We're not firing guns. We don't have rockets taking off or anything like that. And then we also have this word subsequently to talk about in this sentence. Okay, the adverb subsequently means after, after something happens or afterwards. So yeah, after going on the Ellen DeGeneres show, Charlie Puth's career took off. That's when he became super famous. Okay, everybody, let's move on now to the final portion of our lesson for today. When he returns home these days, Puth finds that the people who once bullied him are now his fans. How does he respond to them? I just say, it's nice to see you, Puth admits. I am pretty civil with everybody because I hate bad energy. Perhaps it's the positive energy that Puth puts into his music that's made it so popular. If so, let's hope that he continues to spread that energy and make outstanding music. The museums in Paris have outstanding works of art. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up our article on Charlie Puth. When he returns home these days, Puth finds that the people who once bullied him are now his fans. Yeah, bullies of his, old bullies of his now love him. They're now his fans. How about that? How about that? You might think that he might bear a grudge on these bullies. You know, he's really rich now. He could go back to his hometown, look these guys up who bullied him and say, hey, look at me now. I'm famous. What are you? You're just working a full-time job in the local tire factory or something like that. But he's not like that. He does not bear a grudge. He says he finds that the people who once bullied him, or Puth finds that the people who once bullied him are now his fans. They actually like him. They're probably very sorry. Hey, we're sorry. We were kids then. We didn't know what we were doing. Okay, no harm done. Let's let bygones be bygones. Let's move on with our lives. So how does he respond to them? How does he respond to those bullies? You might think he's got some resentment, but what does he say? How does he respond to them? I just say it's nice to see you, Puth admits. I am pretty civil with everybody because I hate bad energy. What a good guy. Like Roger said before, he could probably ruin these bullies. He's a rich guy now, but yeah, he doesn't like bad energy, so he's nice to these people, these people who used to bully him. What a great guy. Anyways, perhaps it's the positive energy that Puth puts into his music that's made it so popular. If so... Let's hope that he continues to spread that energy and make outstanding music. Now, before we take a break, let's talk about this word outstanding. If something is outstanding, it's extremely good. It's exceptional. It's worthy of notice. It's worthy of your attention. Gee, I'm inspired. I think after our program is over, I'm going to go onto YouTube and listen to some of his songs. I bet they are really catchy tunes. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Time now to listen to our Chinese teacher.
位同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看见文法重点，在课文的第二部分有出现两次 lead to 的用法，一个是 This eventually led to a full scholarship to attend the renowned Berkeley College of Music， 这最终使他获得全额奖学金，进入知名的伯克利音乐学院就读。那这边就是用到 lead to 加上名词的句型，再读到下下一句。The cover became a sensation and led to Puth appearing on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Subsequently, his career took off. 那次翻唱造成轰动，让普斯登上艾伦秀。那在那之后，他的事业开始起飞。好，这个句子它是用到 lead to somebody 加上动词 ing 的句型。那我们就来整理一下 lead to 几种常见的用法。Lead to 它表示造成、导致。当我们用 lead to 加上名词，就表示造成什么什么。例如 ，eating too much food may lead to a stomach ache. 吃太多食物可能会造成胃痛哦，不要吃那么多，七八分饱就好了。好，第二种用法是 lead to 加上某人加上动词 ing， 这表示导致某人做某事。举例来说 ，Her passion for helping people in need led to her becoming a social worker。她那一份想要帮助有需要的人的那种热忱啊，就导致她成为一位社工。另外，我们还可以用 lead somebody to 加上原形动词 lead somebody to do something， 表达促使某人去做某事。例如 ，The journey through Europe led her to consider writing a book based on it。那一趟欧洲的旅行促使她考虑写一本以那趟旅程为基础的书。好，我们再补充一下文中的 subsequently 这个副词呢，它表示随后、紧接着。那它的形容词，我们就把字尾的 ly 去掉，变成 subsequent。subsequent 它是形容后来的、其后的、随后的。还有一个拼法很类似，同学们应该知道，就把前面的 sub 改成 con， 变成 consequent。consequent 它是形容随之发生的。那这两个意思听起来很相近，可是 subsequent 它只是用来说明前后顺序。那它前后发生的事情不见得有关系，所以 subsequent 只是说后来的。怎么样？怎么样？而 consequent 它是用来强调，哎，这是由前者所引起的后果，因为什么什么才有随之而来的结果，意思就跟 resulting 差不多。所以同学们要注意这两个字的意思有点不同哦。至于 consequent 它的副词呢，加上 ly 变成 consequently， 表示结果，因此，那它的意思就跟 as a result 或者是 therefore 差不多。好，那以上是今天的重点整理，接着我们来回顾今天的单词吧。Bully. Calvin often bullied his younger brother and made him cry. Onward. My mother struggled with back pain from when she was 50 onward. Chord. That song is actually composed of only three chords: E, A, and B major. Renowned. The British Library is renowned for having the largest collection of books in the world. Sensation. Have you seen that movie? The lead actress is a sensation. Outstanding. Brandon is an outstanding dancer. I hope he pursues a career in that field. Discussion starter starts now. Okay, let's、uh, have a discussion starter. Here's the question to sort of get things rolling. Do you enjoy Charlie Puth's music? Why or why not? Roger, I think I have alluded to this before, but yeah, I kind of have a confession to make right now. I have not heard any songs by him yet, but I would like to listen to "See You Again" because your rendition was so stirring that yeah, I think I've kind of fallen in love with that song. I want to hear it as soon as possible. Maybe you'd rather hear me sing than him, but、uh, you know, I like his music a lot because that one song, of course, affected lots and lots of people, and they were emotionally attached to that song. And I suppose that song, amongst other songs, can help people better their lives and find some meaning in their lives, so they're not depressed and bitter and cynical all the time. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. 
Many ways. I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next, next time. time.